What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As I promised, I told you I'd be back. Uh, today we'll be doing some fuel system upgrades. This is very necessary if you're going to be doing an LS swap on your Chevy OBS. So today we're getting into the fuel pump, uh, fuel pump sending unit, also any lines, fittings, adapters you need to make your engine actually run. Um, this is some of the older footage that I had that I've been editing. Um, I have quite a bit of footage. So this is some older footage, but it's still very necessary. If you're going to be doing this, you need to follow all these steps or figure out your own steps. But this is what works for me and uh, what's been the best solution in my platform. So uh, let's quit wasting time. Let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to do to remove the bed, we're going to disconnect the uh, fuel neck. So a couple bolts. These are T30s. Then we have this plastic clip. So these just very easily slide out. That pops up and then the whole clip can be pulled out. So now the actual neck is all loose in there. So then we're gonna get you back on the bottom of the truck to remove the bed. Okay, real quick, we're underneath the bed. This is the actual, if you see me, see my hand moving around up here. This is the fuel neck, the door. We have a ground strap here. So that one already broke loose. You just gotta take out the bolt and let the wires hang because I will be removing the bed. Um, and we got a series of 18 millimeter bolts. We have about eight in total holding on the bed. So I'll show you one. That's one. And there's another one there and two more down there so we got to get all of them out get a big extension socket and then we're also going to disconnect the the light harness this one is for your license plate lights tail lights okay that's out and then we also have one um, ground bolt there it is we're going to take all these other bolts off and then we should be right back all right, then we're going to take off this tailgate. We have these two straps. Pretty easy to unhook. All right, guys, this is probably not the uh, safest way to do this, but I'm doing it with my engine hoist to uh, tie down straps and across and then in the center. We're just going to lift up the bed a little bit to access the fuel pump. All right, guys, we just got to blow everything off. All right, guys, we're gonna disconnect everything. These are obviously, this is like the pressure sensor. This is the wiring for the electrical. Should come out pretty easy. Then you have these, which are quick connects. This would be the bigger line being the, what is it? Three eighths, I believe. And the smaller one, this is the feed. This is a smaller one that's a return, which is the five, 16th if I'm not mistaken and this is for like the uh, charcoal canister
nice so that happened Alright, after fighting with this way too long, I had to take it out with the whole cage. So now we're able to release. Alright guys, this one is just a little bit different. Um, this being the snap ring, kind of, uh, the fuel pump sending unit, so, a little snap ring. Finally, it took him forever. I picked up one of these cheap little pumps from uh, Harbor Freight to get all the old gas out. Suck me, beautiful. <laughs> Alright guys, this will be the new fuel pump that we're installing. The new sending unit. But let's take it out and uh, all we're going to be doing replacing the whole unit obviously and then replacing the fuel pump inside with something a little bit better and then we have the new fuel pump And then we're replacing it um, with something a little bit better. This is actually a wall barrel 255. That's the part number, E85 safe. Uh, it is a wall barrel product. Uh, and I got this only because it's a little bit better than stock unit. I heard these will work. Uh, I didn't want to take a chance risking it. And I wanted something a little bit better. And I also wanted to run E85 at some point. So this is basically the way to go. But that's a part number if you need it. GCA758 and I got this from a reliable source summit all right guys uh, I've been out here most of the day trying to figure this out so I did I was able to adapt the the stock sending unit with the new Warlboro pump for say for E85 but I had to do a few things one modify the rubber grommet that it accepts just cut it a little bit um, this one ended up being a, a little bit shorter and it wouldn't accept it inside of the hat. And now you only need the hat because it has a new uh, sending unit. This gives you your gas gauge, which I definitely wanted that. This one was off a little bit, so it didn't quite work. And I think they just they just wear out over time. So it didn't hurt me to destroy this one. I was testing this one out, but you can see that's how it, that's how it reads your gas gauge, obviously with the floater when it's empty. This would be E, and as the flu fuel level goes up, it starts getting like to quarter, half, and then obviously full tank when the floater's all the way to the top. But this one was burned out, I believe, because it, it, oh my, the trucks only ever read about um, a quarter full. And when I would fill it up, it would go up to the full, but then when it would go, go low, it would still only read a quarter, quarter full from being full, but it wasn't. Right now, it, the truck actually read a quarter from being full, but it had about five, less than five gallons left. So it should have been somewhere right here. So these do tend to burn out and fail. And then I also broke it, as you saw when we were trying to take it off. So I didn't use the right tool, but I used what I had and I knew I was replacing it. So it didn't hurt me to, to break this off. So that's trash. And then, um, I was, like I said, I was able to adapt the new fuel pump to the, to the hat to accept it. I made sure everything was in clearance and it ended up working out. I know there is another fuel pump that works better than this, but this is what I have. I wanted to make this work. It's not easy for me to take off the bed to do this. And everything's contained inside here and it's also modified just a little bit so you have the filter in there as well. 
We're gonna test it real quick. Just to make sure my wiring's correct. So we're all good there. And then just final plug there. And this is like a safety grommet so it doesn't come out. We're gonna lube this up and we're putting the whole unit back inside. All right, guys, so I lubed up the uh, the O-ring, the one all the way around, and then th this has a little notch. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It has a little notch, and this also has a little notch where it should meet up with it. You just got to match those up. So again, that notch goes right there and spring loaded. Then we get our, our ring and clean this off real quick. All we have to do is plug here, plug here, and then your lines. Again, quick connects. This is the three eighths. There it goes. Clicks. This is the five sixteenths. Clicks. This is the little breather. And again, click, click, double check, you're good to go. guys this is the following day uh, the beds all bolted back up we're gonna come up to the front uh, a few things that you'll be needing so I'm using the stock uh, fuel lines so this is the 3 8 also the uh, 5 16 this is the return and feed um, but I'm using the stock ones just make sure you replace those with rubbers little o-rings because your new adapter fittings this is the one for the 3 8 from Frangola. So this little adapter will bolt up to that fitting, but you have to have an O-ring inside there for it to seal properly. That's the part number for that one. That's for the 3 8 And for the 5 16 same one, Frangola, but different part number. A little bit smaller in diameter because they are different sizes. And also, you need some quick connects for your intake. So this would be the... 5 eighths and I'm sorry the 3 eighths and 5 sixteenths and then I quickly made up some lines so this will be for your feed and return these are made out of PTFE uh, fuel line so these take a little bit to make a little while to make they're kind of difficult to work with but they're very very secure high pressure lines so that's what I'm going to be using, just preparing for the future to run E85. I still got a little bit of rubber hose left on that, so we got to change that first. But um, I will be able to fire this up just on regular pump gas. And then this is just, uh, if you're running a Holley Terminator X, if you're running a, a Holley system, this is a fuel, fuel pressure sensor. 
and I'm gonna run in, tap into the feed line. Okay, so I'll do the smaller one first. This is the return. And then we'll do the bigger one. And this will be the feed. So this would be the return. And the feed. And we're gonna loosely leave these here and I'll show you why. Okay guys, the intake is where it's gonna sit. So we're gonna use our quick connects. And this is the return. So we're gonna simply just mock it up real quick. And you're able to slide it in and these also have o-rings so it completes the seal and then this little locking ring and then again we have the quick connect these have o-rings inside to seal the fuel rail oh before we do that we got to add this guy on so this will be the uh, fuel pressure sensor that works off of the holly it's just easier to hook these up this way slide that on get your locking nut lock it down and of course, tighten all your lines and fittings up. This is just for my own purposes of mocking everything up. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. As you've seen, uh, you can adapt some uh, stock OBS lines to run on your LS engine. And these are all bolted down. Um, you have a big bolt holding on the steel line, so that's not going anywhere. And I, I ran them this way. That was the best way I could figure out. So we have, uh, the uh, quick connect fittings on the new uh, fuel rail fuel rail for LS, the 3 8 5 16 quick connects, the adapter adapter fittings. This will run uh, off the holly for the uh, fuel pressure sensor, and then we also have uh, the PTFE lines. So I'll give you a closer look. Hopefully, show you up on camera. And don't worry about the wiring. We're going to be running a holly Terminator X Max on this, but uh, I needed the clearance because of that sensor back there that would be the oil pressure sensor but yeah guys we're all done for today we're going to be buttoning this up really quick here uh, stay tuned for what's to come next all right guys that's going to be a wrap for today as you saw in the video it was a good day i was able to complete the entire fuel system from back to front so we accomplished that by removing the actual bed of the truck that's the easiest way i know how to do it it's just easier for me because i'm usually by myself and um it's easier than dropping the tank, much easier for me. So I was able to do that, replace the uh, fuel pump sending unit. It's not necessary in every application, but I felt I needed to replace it only because of my gas gauge never quite worked properly. Also, I ended up breaking one of the lines, which I had the, the whole sending unit anyway, so it worked out. But I also went ahead and replaced it with uh, a new, uh, replaced the old fuel pump that came with the new sending unit with the Whirlboro 255 E85 safe, which is the main goal. Um, I ran up all the way to the front with the steel lines, stock steel lines, and adapted some PTFE lines to the uh, LS engine. So that'll work out great. Uh, running E85 is basically the goal, but for now it's safe on pump gas, regular 91, 87, whatever you want to run. So uh, 
as always, guys, make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you like what you saw today, make sure you show some support and smash that like button. As always, guys, follow me on my Instagram at lowlifeyonkis. I will up, up, upload a bunch of pictures whenever I have a chance, and I'll catch you very shortly on the next one.